the blind will see, to you the mute will sing, to you the dead will rise, to you all hearts will praise, to you the darkness flees, to you my heart screams, I am free, I am free. The kingdom of God is a major theme through the Bible. Jesus began his earthly ministry proclaiming the arrival of the kingdom of heaven. During his final days before his ascension, 
he taught concerning the kingdom of God. We must understand that this kingdom is within us. We must recognize that we are sons and daughters of the kingdom, sown as good seed into this world. This study will teach you how to live and operate out of a kingdom of God perspective. Today on Living Strong, we focus on the theme, Kingdom Thinking. Welcome and greetings. Thank you for joining in uh, on this telecast of Living Strong. It's uh, always a joy to come your way and share the Word of God with you. Uh, the last uh, couple of weeks, we've uh, embarked on a journey as we're studying the Word of God together on the Kingdom of God. And uh, we are uh, exploring various facets and aspects uh, of what the Bible teaches us about the Kingdom of God. On the telecast today, I want to talk to us about kingdom thinking. That is, learning to think from a kingdom of God perspective, which uh, is obviously very contrary to the way we are accustomed to think and, uh, and look at things. You know, we are in a, a new kingdom, a different kingdom, and therefore there is a new paradigm, there's a new way we look at things and the way we look at uh, the world, the way we look at people, uh, the way we uh, even relate to God. It's, it's totally a new way of thinking. Uh, the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, again, a, a passage of the scripture that we've seen often uh, over the study, that God has delivered us from the powers of darkness. He has translated us into the kingdom of his own dear son. So we are in his kingdom. We've come out of the kingdom of darkness and we are in a new kingdom. And therefore we will have to learn uh, many things that are very different to the, what we were accustomed to. Uh, John wrote in 1 John chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, he said, They are of this world, therefore they speak as of this world, we, and the world hears them. We are of God, and we speak as of God. So there's a difference. Those who are of the world speak as of the world. Those who are of God speak as of God. So there's, a, there's a, 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 a two different worlds of existence, if you will. And so we've got to learn to shift from what we, the way we were used to speaking and thinking to a new way that where we speak and think as of God. Jesus said in John 18 and verse 36, he said, My kingdom is not of this world. Meaning his kingdom is totally different, totally contrary to the way the world operates and the way the, the, the things are done on the world, in the world. So we have to develop what we would like to call as a kingdom framework of thinking. Our, our framework uh, is centered around the way the kingdom of God operates and what Jesus taught us concerning the kingdom. So we, have, we build this framework and then we begin to think in line with that framework. We call it the kingdom framework of thinking. And... Uh, uh, on the program today, I'm just going to highlight some of these aspects of kingdom thinking, and not necessarily everything about kingdom thinking, but some aspects about this. And I encourage you to get a copy of our free publication, The Kingdom of God. It's available for free, so you can just download it off our website. Or if you want a printed copy, just email us, and we'll be happy to send you a printed copy of this, which is free as well. Here are some important things about developing a kingdom framework of thinking. The first thing we must understand, keep in mind is that in the kingdom of God, we are called to a higher standard in everything, a higher standard in daily living, and a higher standard in, in giving, a higher standard in, in, in extending forgiveness, and so on. We are called to a much higher standard than what the world is accustomed to. For example, in contrasting the old covenant and life in the new, Jesus had these things to say in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 30. He said, you know, uh, in the old, uh, if you committed murder, then you were in danger of judgment. But I'm saying anyone who's angry with his brother without a cause is in danger of judgment. Uh, in the old, uh, it was said, you will not commit adultery. But what I say to you is this, is what Jesus said. If you look, if anyone looks at a woman very lu is lustfully, that is the same as committing adultery. Look, with lust in his heart, Jesus said that's committing adultery. So 
the standard Jesus brought in to talk to us about the kingdom were just raised so much more higher. It's not just committing murder, but if it's the heart issue that matters. It's not just committing adultery, but it's the heart of lust that matters. And so in kingdom, in, in kingdom thinking, we don't look at, you know, uh, you know, what's the minimum that I need to do? But in, the, in kingdom thinking, our, 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 our standards are so much higher for everyday life. We don't, uh, and Jesus taught us not to judge other people just by the external, but understand the heart of people. A very important part of kingdom thinking is to think in terms of love. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 43 and 44, he said, uh, you heard that it was said, you will love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. So now here's a radical shift in thinking. The normal way to think is love those who love you and you hate those who hate you. Do good to those who do good to you and you retaliate to those who harm you. But Jesus brought about a complete shift to that thinking. He said, love your enemy. Do good to those who hate you and persecute you and despitefully use you. So that's a total change in the way we think. We are called to love our enemy, called to love those who hate us, called to do good to those who persecute us. And so our thinking changes. When somebody harms you, somebody hurts you, you're not looking at, how can I retaliate? You understand. You're part of God's kingdom. And as part of that kingdom, you think differently. You think about, how can I give him more love? How can I demonstrate greater love and greater compassion to that person? To let them know that there is a better way to live and, and that we are part of a different kingdom. So the, in kingdom thinking, we think in terms of love and compassion. In kingdom thinking, we think in terms of faith. Meaning, I don't just look at what can be done naturally. I just don't look at what can be done from a human perspective. But I look at what can be done through faith in God. Jesus taught us about having faith in God. In Matthew chapter 6, Verses 31 to 33, he said, Do not worry, saying, What we will eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles say. But your Heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. In Luke 12, 31 and 32, Jesus said, But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Do not fear, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So he's calling us out of a place of worry and anxiety into a place of faith. And he says, you know, you just seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things that you need will be added to you. So in kingdom thinking, we think in terms of faith as opposed to, as opposed to thinking out of fear or worry or anxiety. We think about what God has promised to do for us. And so we make pursuing the kingdom of God the number one thing in our lives, knowing that as we do that, He promised all these other things will be added to us. Another aspect of kingdom thinking is that we are motivated by what we do for the sake of the king. And there is no price that is too great to pay for His sake, for His honor. Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, Verses 34 and 35. It says, He said, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's will save it. He said, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. If you lose your life for my sake, you will save it. So here's a radical shift in our thinking. Because according to the ways of the world and according to the ways we are accustomed to, accustomed to think, we think about preserving our lives. We think about self-preservation. Uh, we think about doing things that will make sure that uh, things go, uh, are secure for us. But Jesus is calling us saying, look, if you're willing to risk your life for my sake, if you're willing to lose for my sake, you're actually going to gain your life. You're actually going uh, to save your life. So this is a really different way to look at life, to have a kingdom framework uh, of thinking. 
knowing that there is no price too great that I could pay for the sake of my king. That if I lose something for his sake, I'm actually gaining. I'm actually becoming richer when I let go of things for his sake as he leads me to do that, as he directs me to do that. So we have a very different way of looking at life and what's really valuable to life because anything that may seem important to the world, we let go, we do it for the sake of the king. Another uh, uh, important aspect of kingdom thinking is the value of childlikeness. Now, in the world, uh, people may laugh at being childlike, but Jesus invites us in the kingdom to be childlike. Now, I mean, he's not, we're not talking about being childish, but we're talking about being childlike. Uh, in Matthew, the 18th chapter, when uh, some of these uh, 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 the di- disciples come to Jesus and they ask him, Lord, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus calls a little child to him. He sets the child in, uh, in their midst. And this is what he says in Matthew 18, verse 3. He says, unless you be converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4, therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He's saying, look, you need to become like a child, like this little child, and you'll be great in the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew 19, verse 14, he says, let the children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Of such little children is the kingdom of heaven. In Mark 10, verse 15, he says, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. So he's talking about greatness that comes through childlikeness. He talks about entrance into kingdom that comes through childlikeness. He talks about receiving the kingdom through being childlike. So in the kingdom of God, childlikeness is a virtue. It's what makes you great in the kingdom. It's what gives you access into the things of the kingdom. It's what empowers you to receive the kingdom. Now, when you talk about being childlike, we mean to have a a, a total dependence, an implicit dependence, an unquestioning dependence on God. You know, a child never really questions its parent on, you know, where is the parent going to give me food? The child doesn't even bother, doesn't even concern itself with those things. The child just trusts that the parent is going to take care of it. There'll be food, there'll be protection, there'll be security, everything. And Jesus says, that's a virtue. Being childlike, coming to God with that simplicity of faith, he says, is what is going to make you great in the kingdom. It's what's going to give you entrance and access into the things of the kingdom. It's what's going to empower you to receive the kingdom. So in, in kingdom thinking, we learn to be childlike. We learn to have that Total, complete trust and confidence in God. And that's what empowers us to be great and experience the kingdom. Another important part of kingdom thinking is is servant humility. Now, this is not considered great in the world, but in the kingdom of God, it is. In Matthew, the 20th chapter, verses 20 to 28, uh, when uh, when, uh, uh, the mother of uh, James and John comes to Jesus and says, you know, uh, I, I, she just, she's just trying to get, make sure that both her sons get the best place next to Jesus. He says, can you make sure that James and John sit on your right hand and one on your left when you come into your kingdom? And Jesus uses that opportunity to talk about true greatness. And then he, he tells, he teaches his, his disciples. He says, you know, look at the rulers of this world. You know, how they lord it over those who are subordinate to them. But he says, that's not the way it's going to be in the kingdom. In the kingdom, whoever is least among you will be the greatest. Whoever is the servant among you he is going to be the leader. So again, a total shift in our thinking. In kingdom thinking, we understand that humility is the place of honor. That when you serve uh, uh, like a servant, that's what entitles you to leadership among people. So this is a total shift in kingdom thinking. And we begin to think that way. And we begin to operate that way uh, as the Lord teaches us. One last thing that I want to bring to our attention about kingdom thinking is to celebrate the king's perspective. In Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16, Jesus 
gave us this illustration, this parable. He talked about a, 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 a man, an owner of a, a vineyard, who, uh, who went out to the market. He saw some people at 9 o'clock in the morning. He invited them to come, uh, laborers, to come and work for him in the morning. Then at about 12 o'clock in the afternoon, he finds a few more laborers. He calls them to come and work for him. Then at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, he finds some more laborers. He calls them to come and work for him. Then at the end of the day, at 6 o'clock in the evening, all these laborers stand before him to get their daily wages. And for the people who started work at 3 o'clock, he gives the same wages as he gives to those who started the work at 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, obviously, there was some sort of a, a discontent and murmuring among those who started work at 9 in the morning, saying, this is unfair. This, you know, how come you're giving them the same money, the same amount of money that you're giving us, and we've worked in more number of hours? Then the owner replies, saying, did I not agree to pay you such and such amount? And I've kept my promise, I've paid you that amount. So what is it to you if I choose to pay that same amount to some other group of people who started later in the day? And Jesus uses that as an illustration to teach us that in the kingdom of God, God would do as he desires and he will reward people as he desires. And he says the last will be first and the first will be last. And that is not for us to decide. Uh, God is free to do. With, as he pleases, as uh, God is free to reward people as he pleases. The point here is this. We celebrate whatever God does. We celebrate the fact that when God chooses to reward somebody the way he d does, we celebrate it. We acknowledge it. We don't question that, you know, that that person does not deserve it, that that person is not worthy of that reward. But we celebrate the work of God in their lives. And like this, there are several other aspects of kingdom thinking that we need to embrace and, 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 and change our framework, change our paradigm, and begin to look at things from God's perspective, the kingdom, kingdom's perspective. Today's message is an excerpt from the publications titled The Kingdom of God, where we discover how to live and operate out of a kingdom of God perspective. The teaching on the kingdom of God is so important. Jesus began his ministry talking about the kingdom of God and he concluded his ministry teaching and preaching about the kingdom of God. Write to us to get a free copy of the book or visit our website www.apcwo.org to download this publication and various other free resources to help you in your spiritual journey. Before we close the program today, I'd like to take a moment to pray with you. On the telecast today, we talked about kingdom thinking and how there are several aspects that are very different when we think in line with the kingdom of God. God's kingdom is inside you and me, and we are part of the kingdom of God. And for us to live that life in the kingdom, one very important thing is to change our thinking. We need to learn to think God's way. Think in terms of the values and uh, uh, the king's perspective as we as we live out this kingdom life. I want to close this time in prayer together, and I want to just encourage you to pray with me. Believe that God will help us develop kingdom thinking in our life so that what would trouble us normally will not trouble us anymore because we look at things from the kingdom of God perspective. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the time in the word today. And I pray for your grace that will empower and enable us to begin to look at things from your perspective. To look at things from uh, the perspective of love, from the perspective of humility, from the perspective of serving, from the perspective of celebrating what you do, O oh God. And we will learn to look at things from the kingdom of God perspective. I pray you'll help us develop this in our lives. And I pray for the release of the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God, on those watching, that we will grow in our understanding of the kingdom of God. And the power of your kingdom will affect every sphere of our lives. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the program today. And we just love to hear from you. So if you'd be kind enough to take a moment to write to us, email us, let us know how these telecasts are helping you and building your life. Hearing from you will encourage us. And remember, until we meet next time, live life the Jesus way. Great is your love and justice, God. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us.
people you sing it remember out? your children remember your promise come on, let's sing that again oh, so God. remember your people oh. 